God made him who had no sin So that we might become his righteousness Instead of ourselves he offered him So that we might become his righteousness So that we might become his righteousness So that we might become his righteousness Holy God was offered for us So we might become his righteousness So that we might become it was one of the worst days in biblical history. It was the day that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The stench of the sins of the people began to infiltrate the nostrils of God. God decided to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham tried to negotiate for the city because his nephew Lot and his family were living in Sodom and Gomorrah. God said, if I find 50 righteous people there, I will save the people. Abraham negotiated for 50 people and went down to 10 people, and God said, Abraham, if you find 10 people in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, I will save the city. But 10 people could not be found in these cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so judgment fell upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says these words in Genesis chapter number 19 and verse number 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth, talking about Lot and his family, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And then verse number 24 says, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstones and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities and all of the plain and all of the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife, Lot, looked back and became a pillar of salt. The worst day in biblical history was the day that it rained down fire and brimstones from heaven. One of the worst things that we can do is to disobey God when God gives us a commandment. It, it is one of the worst things that we can do to disobey God. And the Bible says, and the angel said to Lot and his wife, escape to the mountains. God is going to rain down fire and brimstones on this city. And don't look back. And the Bible says that while they were escaping, the Bible says that Miss Lot looked back. She became a pillar of salt. Lost her life looking back. Can we talk today? Can we talk today about the dangers of looking back? The dangers of looking back is our subject. I wrestle with the idea and I wrestle with the mystery and, and there have been theologians who have been wrestling with the question of what was she looking at? What a dangerous thing. What a dangerous thing it was to look back after God and the angels told her not to look back. I got a question today. I have a question. What was she looking at? What was she looking at? 
She lost her life and possibly lost her soul looking back. I, I need to talk today. I need to talk today about the dangers, the dangers, the dangers of looking back. What are you looking at? What are you looking for, Miss Lot? Why are you looking back is my subject today as we explore the question of the dangers of looking back. I want to put this question in the oven and we are going to explore uh, this particular question of what are you looking for? What was she looking back for? Sodom and Gomorrah was on fire. Fire and brimstone were falling upon Sodom and Gomorrah and they were headed to the mountains and suddenly she looked back. It became a pillar of salt. I still raise the question today. Miss Lord, what you looking at? Why are you looking back? Why are you looking back? Somebody says, somebody said, maybe she's looking at Lot. She could not have been looking at Lot because the Bible says that Lot was in front of her. Somebody said, maybe there was another Lot that she was looking at. I don't know. She became a pillar of salt. My brothers and sisters, it is a serious thing to blatantly and willfully and rebelliously disobey God. God had given her instructions, don't look back. And she willfully, she, she blatantly, and she, 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 she rebelliously looked back. Oh, I tell you, it's a dangerous thing to disobey God. Blatantly and rebelliously. We all have been there. You don't understand God. The Bible says in God's courtroom. When you rebelliously and willfully. And, and blatantly sinned against God. That is a sentence of death. The Bible says. For the wages of sin is death. The wages are the pay for rebellious blatant Oh, rebellious sin is death. Death. And we've all been there. Oh, I'm so glad today. I'm so glad today that God is not uh, turning us into a pillar of salt. And God is not destroying us and killing us for willfully, blatantly, and rebelliously sinning against him. We all are guilty. We all are guilty. It's only by the mercy of God, it's only by the grace of God that we are here today because we all have willfully sinned against God. We all have blatantly sinned against God. We all have rebelliously sinned against God. And oh, it's by the grace of God we are here today. By the love and the grace of God, we are here today. The grace of God, we have not been turned into a pillar of salt. But I want you to try, I want you to fast forward now 4,000 years to the New Testament. Oh, Jesus, the Lord has transformed this pillar of salt into uh, the salt of the earth. That's what Jesus says. Jesus looked at his disciples and Jesus says to every follower, to every Christian, you are the salt of the earth. Matthew chapter number five. You, you are the salt of the earth. You are, you, you are the salt of the earth. What are you talking about, Jesus? During that day, salt as it is today, salt is a seasoning. What Jesus was saying to the disciples and saying to all of us, don't you know that you are seasoning for the world? Don't you know you make the world taste better? Don't you know you make the school taste better? Because you are the salt of the earth. You make everything better because you are the salt of the earth, Jesus says. 
You make your community better. You make your job better. You make your, the church better because you are the salt of the earth. You make everything taste better. You are the salt of the earth. You make everything taste better. Yes, but what was she looking at? That bothers me. I've been trying to find out and I, I've been researching to try to find out what was she looking at? She looking back. Look at her now. Looking back. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah is on fire. Fire and brimstones falling from heaven. And she looking back. What is she looking for? I got to tell you this. Don't look back. There's a danger in looking back. In your past, look in the real view mirror of your life. You will find someone there who has misused you. You will find someone there who has abused you. You will find someone there that has wronged you and cheated on you and lied on you. But don't look back. Don't look back. Forgive them. Don't look back. Don't dwell on it. Don't look back. Oh, yes. One day, Paul, talking to the Ephesian brethren, he was talking about some people that had bothered them, some people that had wronged them, some people that had misused and abused them. He said these words. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 32. Paul says, and be kind one to another. And he said, forgiving one another, even as God for your sake has forgiven you, or for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Don't look back. I can hear someone say, why should I forgive them? Why should I forgive them? They, they beat me. They lied on me. They talked about me. And why, 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 Gray? Why, why should I forgive them? It's in the text. The text says the reason you ought to forgive them is because God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Look in the rearview mirror in your life. Look at the sin that you've committed. Look at all the wrong that you have done. Yes, you look at all of the lies that you have told. Look at all the sins in your life. The Bible says that God has forgiven you. For Christ's sake, God has forgiven you. Can't you forgive someone else? I can hear someone saying, but you don't know what they did. Brother Gray, you, you just don't know what they did to me. I don't know what they did to you, but I know what Christ did for you. I don't know what they did to you, but I know what Christ did for you. He died for you. Someone said, they beat me. Oh, they beat, it. they beat Christ as well. Someone said they lied on me. Yes, they lied on Jesus. Someone said they talked about me and, and downgraded me. Man, don't you know they talked about Jesus? Everything that they did to you, they did to Jesus. And they killed him and crucified him. Has anybody killed you? Has anybody crucified you? What a danger it is. What a danger it is to keep on looking back on at grudges. To keep on looking back at your life on grudges and, and not willing to and not willing to forgive. Jesus said to those individuals, you remember him. Call a woman in adultery. Call her in the very act. 
And they brought her to Jesus. And they said, Jesus, the Lord said, we are a stone there. And can you see them now? They got stones in their hands and they are ready to stone the woman. And Jesus said these words, you who is without sin, you cast the first stone. You, if you've never lied, cast the first stone. If you've never cheated anybody, cast the first stone. If you have never wronged anybody, cast the first stone. And the Bible said they all threw down their stone and they left because all of them were guilty. What I'm saying is all of us are guilty. You don't have a right to stone anybody. I see you now, I see you now with your stone in your hand. You're ready to stone somebody because somebody has wronged you and hurt you and abused you. You better put that stone down. You who is without sin, cast the first stone. You can't cast a stone because you are guilty. You are guilty. Oh, Paul one day said these words. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Oh, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Don't look back. Paul said, I'm not going to look back. I'm going to forget about those things that are behind me. I'm going to forget about them. I'm not looking back. Forgetting about, forgetting about those things which are behind, Paul says. Paul says, all of the stuff that they did to me, I'm going to forgive it. I'm going to forget it. Do you remember when they stoned Paul? In the city of Lystra, the Bible said they stoned Paul and left him half dead. And Paul was saying, I got to forget about that. I got to forget. I'm not going to look back at that. Do you remember one day they stoned him again at uh, Damascus? Oh, the Jews were there. They were mean against Paul and they wanted to destroy Paul and Paul was saying, I got to forget about that. I, I, I'm not looking back. Do you remember the man called Alexander? Paul said, Alexander has caused me much evil, but God is going to repay him according to his deeds. Paul said, I'm going to forget about what Alexander done. I'm not going to look back. I'm going to forget it. What a tragedy it is. What a danger it is to, to not forgive someone. I want to say it again. What a danger. It's a danger. It's a tragedy when you refuse to forgive someone because Jesus said these words. If you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you of your trespasses. Don't you know it's a danger? Don't you know it's a danger? Don't you know it's a danger to hold a grudge? You are in danger when you hold a grudge. You are in danger when you hold a grudge. I heard a sad story one day. Oh, how sad it was. A woman woke up beside her husband, a husband of 55 years. She woke up and he was dead. Somehow he had died in the middle of the night. She woke up and she knew that he was dead. She began to cry. She began to cry. And she lost her mind. At that moment, she lost her mind. You know what she did? She began to talk to them. She began to embrace him. She began to tell him how much she loved him. Do you not know what she did? She fixed him breakfast that morning and she tried to feed him. 
She lost her mind. Oh, and then she turned on the TV to his favorite show and she tried to get him to look at the TV on the, on the, on the TV, his favorite show. And every day she would try to bathe him. And she, and for weeks she embraced his decaying body. Can you look at her now? They're embracing his decayed body. She's embracing and kissing him. What a sad story it is. Don't you know that some of us are embracing dead grudges? Dead things that have happened in the past. You're still holding on to it. You're still loving it. You're still embracing it. What, what a tragedy it is. What a danger it is. What how sad it is for you. Oh, it's sad today. But I can see the question in your mind. Somebody is saying, Brother Gray, how can I forgive? How can I forgive all of the hurt? How can I forgive all of the pain? How can I forgive all of the wrong? How, how can I forgive? How, how can I forgive? I want you to meet Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Joseph in the Bible. Oh, Joseph had been wronged by his brothers. Brothers tried to kill him. You know, the Bible says they threw him in a pit. If that wasn't bad enough... They took him out of the pit and they sold him as a slave. Uh, the Bible says they envied Joseph and they hated Joseph. The question comes, how can Joseph forgive? How can Joseph forgive his own brother that wanted to kill him? How can he forgive his own brother that, that he envied him and they hated him and sold him as a slave? How can, how can Joseph forgive? Joseph answers the question in Genesis chapter 41. Joseph said these words. Are you listening? God has made me to forgive all of my father's house. Oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord has made me to forgive. The Lord has helped me to forgive all of the misery and the pain, and all of the envy and the strife and the hatred. The Lord has made me to forgive. And the Lord will help, help, hold you to, help you to forgive, my brothers and sisters. The Lord will help you to forgive the pain. The pain, the Lord will help you to forgive. Yes, he will. But I keep thinking about Sister Lord, what was she looking back at? I can't get it out of my mind. What was she looking back at? But Jesus said these words. Young man came to Jesus one day and said, Jesus, I want to follow you, but let me go back and uh, bid my family farewell. I'm in Luke chapter 9. You know what Jesus said these words? Jesus said these words. Whosoever put his hand to the plow. Oh, listen to Jesus. Whosoever put the hand to the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus paints a picture here. Of a farmer who is plowing. And somehow he's plowing the field and maybe he's by the roadside, the highway. And as he's plowing, something passes on the highway and it passes him and it gets his attention and he looks back. You get the picture. Jesus says. He's not fit for the kingdom of God. Told this young man, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. You're looking back, you're looking back. What are you talking about, Jesus? How does this, does this apply to our lives? There are some people who are looking back at their old lives. They're looking back at their sinful lives. They're looking back at the world. Jesus says, if you're looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. 
You're not fit for the kingdom. You, 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 you're not, you don't have any use for the kingdom. The kingdom can't use you because you are, you are still in the world. Your mind is still in the world. You see, the problem with uh, Sister Lot was she was out of Sodom, but Sodom was not out of her. You heard me. The reason, the, the problem with Sister Girl was she was out of Sodom, but Sodom was not out of her. Sodom was still in the mind. And there are some people, they are, they, are, they are out of the world, but the world is not out of them. Their mind is still in the world. And Jesus says, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. You're not fit for the kingdom of God. It was Paul that said these words, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get your mind out of the world. Get your mind out of the world and get your mind back into the kingdom. Well, I still have this question that I'm wrestling with. What was she looking back at? What was she looking back at? Well, Jesus helps us 4,000 years later. Listen to me today. 4,000 years later, Jesus began to teach. He began to teach the word of God in the book of Luke. Jesus said these words. He began to talk about the final judgment. And Jesus said these words. In that day, he which shall be on the housetop and his stuff is in the house, let him not go back into the house. And then he said these words, remember Lot's wife. I got it now, Jesus. What was she looking at, Jesus? Jesus insinuated she was looking at her stuff. She was looking at all of her stuff back in Sodom. Oh, and she had a lot of stuff. Don't you know Lot and his wife had a lot of stuff? They were multi-millionaires. Oh, they had cattle and they had land. They had servants. They, oh, the Bible says they were some of the richest people in the East. And she was looking back. She was looking back. She was looking back at her stuff. There is somebody who's looking back at their stuff. And oh, what a danger it is. The Bible said these words, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of which is not of the Father but of the world. For the world passes away and the lust thereof. Don't you fall in love with this stuff. Don't you fall in love with this stuff. When you fall in love with this stuff, you're going to look back at this. Don't look back at your stuff. This world is going to pass away. And all of your stuff with it. Don't fall in love with yourself. Don't look back. There's a danger in looking back. God is with us. God is here. My friends may turn their backs against me, but God will stand so true.